In today's tutorial, learn how to make this fabulous garden bag. It can double as a project bag and it's absolutely brilliant. And welcome back to Yarn Inspirations as well as the crochetcrowd.com. I'm your host, Mikey. Today we're going to work on this garden tote bag. It is absolutely amazing. I, I love this bag for the simplicity. Really not a lot of fancy stitch work, but it looks amazing. Has pockets on the front and the back side, just like so. I think it would double great as a project bag. Today's tutorial, let's explore some of the components to make this bag and let's get this puppy done. So let's, so let's go through this project together. I'm gonna go through an overview on what we need to do together and then what we're going to do is then we're gonna dive into the finishing techniques and I'm gonna physically show you how to do that here with this particular bag. So what we're going to be doing today is that you're going to be getting your pattern and the pattern is of course free and it's just one page. It's that simple of a pattern because most of everything that you see within the actual a uh, picture is just straight um, rectangles and it's all just done in single crochet. So basically what you're looking at is that everything that you see except for the very bottom of the pockets area is all done in rectangular format. So what you can just do and this is a, an overview part is that you can just simply go and just follow the directions. It says with two strands. So when you're using this you want to make sure that you have two strands of cotton together and this makes it for a very durable bag. When you're looking at the photo here it's standing up by itself because it is double stranded and it will give it very nice and durable um, and very thick ply to it. So you can really kind of see it here. It's a very very thick bag. So it's just very easy. So the very first part you're going to make the front and the back panels and you're just gonna follow the instructions. Now you're going to follow the instructions as it says here and you can basically just grab your measuring tape and just measure it out to the size that you want for the height. And then it has up here which is part of the same panels for the front and the back is that there's holes for the handles. And so you just have to follow the instructions, chain one, one single crochet in each of the first 16 single crochets and then you're just gonna chain three and miss three single crochets and then one single crochet in the next 12, chain three and miss the next three and that has that. So what are you doing here? So basically you are creating the top handle section just like this. So I've already had this one already secured. Um, basically I did it for myself just to be able to show you how to do it. So this is leaving a hole. So when we go to do the handle at the very end what we're going to do is that we're just gonna fold this over and we're gonna insert this strap right through the hole like so and we're just gonna use a darning needle and just kind of fold it over and just sew in between here and it catches the other side as well. So you'll use the same color yarn so that you'll never see the yarn when you go to do it and therefore you have the handle. So for the front and the back what you're seeing here that's for the holes and that's almost very near the very top of your bag just like so. And so then it becomes a very nice thing to do. You'll never get these through if you don't leave those holes. So that's the front and the back panel. So let's begin just to review on how to single crochet and I'm gonna put that on screen next and then but we're gonna come back and then we're gonna start focusing on some of these finishing techniques that we're going to do. So I'm gonna ask that you do the holes just like so. Just follow the instructions just like you see here. Do the holes and when we come back we're gonna start doing some of the finishing uh, ideas first. But we're gonna start off with the side pocket. Um, the pocket is kinda neat so what we're going to do is then chain whatever it says. It, <laughs> it says the pocket says chaining 75 and we're gonna do the first row, second row and get to the sizes that we need. You'll notice that the pocket also has a different color just like this. Okay. So we want to be very conscientious of that and then what we're gonna do when I come back is that I'm gonna show you how to do the actual bottom of the pockets because that's probably the hardest part for many people. So let's say review on um, doing this. So we're going to put in two strands in our hands at one time and pretend that there's just one strand and we're going to create a slip knot. Using a four millimeter size G crochet hook you'll think this is pretty small and it is and that's because they want the bag to be nice and tight. So what we're going to do is that just like you would you just follow the instructions. So for the main panel it would be 51. I'm not gonna show you 51. I'm just gonna give you a demonstration. So just yarn over, pull through. So one, two, three, four, five, six and seven and then all you're just gonna do second chain from the hook when you get into the size that you need for the handles or the panels. Second chain from the hook, turn it over, get the back loop only, insert your hook into that one, yarn over 
and just uh, single crochet yourself using the back loop all the way across. Just like that. So if you do it like this it just becomes really easy. So you're gonna notice the stitch work is really tight. Um, it, they've done it on purpose so nothing really falls through it. It's a great idea. It saves you from having to line your bag as well. So it's a really neat concept. So you're gonna go all the way across your line for a single crochet and this is the last one here. Once you get to your last one you're going to turn your work just like so and then just chain one and single crochet into the same one and then single crochet into each one of those going across. So the trick is with a single crochet is that you gotta make sure that you put your stitches in where they're supposed to. Um, you don't want, these are all rectangles so you don't want any triangles by accident and making sure you always catch that last stitch that's available to you. Many people that are new to crochet always forget that stitch therefore it's not square. So once you turn your work, chain one, same stitch like so and then continue all the way across. When you get all the way to cross do not get confused by adding any extra stitches or forgetting that final stitch. Okay, so I got my last stitch here. So it looks like it's bulging out a bit and the reason for it is that because we chained one so you always have a little bit of a bulge when you do that. So you just chain one, a single crochet into the same. So, so many people when they go to do kind of uh, square panels they accidentally put a st stitch in with that chain one as well. Therefore they're increasing their stitches as they go along. So make sure you get into that last one and turn your work chain one. So continue to work on this pattern. It's a pretty simple easy uh, pattern to follow. Um, good luck on it. Uh, have fun with your colors. The color suggestions are there. Well, the crochet crowd also the crochet crowd also came up with our own color combinations. Daniel studied the colors and came up with a really cool version that you see and it's a really kind of a neat idea. So, so let's review on how to do the pockets area and the pockets again this is just chain 75 and we basically work ourselves up and we make sure that there's a color change that is in there just like it says in the actual instructions. So this is just single crochet back and forth until you get to the very end where we start to do the bottom of the pockets area. Now this is what the bottom of the pockets look like. Now there is actually um, an interesting thing here is that this was crocheted by a test sampler and basically there's actually an error in the way that you're seeing it here. This should be only chaining of a uh, single crochet of 13 which it is but the crochet has added more and more as she's gone out. So what we have to do is that we have to make sure that when we go to do this you can do it this way if you wish. So all she's just done is that she's added an extra stitch so she went over extra one and then over an extra one but in actual fact this should be totally square coming up like this. So there's, so each one of these layers should be actually only be uh, 13 single crochets. So how we did that, let's go back to the be very beginning because this is our goal. This should not be done at the time that I'm about to present this to you but I've pulled apart the sample in order for you to see it. Okay, so this is our goal but I'm gonna show you how to get started and then you'll see how these can be made very easily as well. Okay, so let's begin. As per the instructions we have to go back to the base of it here and it says that we have to miss uh, skip over six. So let's uh, begin to do that one, two, three, four, five and six and we want to be able to start with that. So miss the first six so we're gonna go to the seventh just like so and this is where we're going to start. So we're gonna grab our yarn and I'm just gonna create a slip knot to put it on. Okay and I want to pull through okay and join it. Okay so I'm pulling everything through including the straggler just to really lock it in a position and I want to chain one and I want to put a single crochet in each of the next 13. Sing or, okay so we want to go there. So, so this is one and two and three four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and thirteen. So this is where we're going to stop. 
Okay, so we don't go any further than this on this particular bottom of the pocket. We are gonna completely finish this pocket and then we're, what we're gonna do is that we're gonna come back and then we're going to finish the rest of the pockets. But as I told you, the other pockets here are not correct. So what we have to just do at this point is that we have to um, um, just secure it. So what we have to do is come to the next one here, just go in and pull through and through like so and turn our project. So instead of having to sew at the end, you've already just grabbed the next one so that you can actually just make it work for you. Okay, and that's what that crochet has done over here. She just grabbed the next one to prevent herself from sewing. So all you're just gonna do at this point is just come back into the first one and single crochet yourselves back across. So I can see why she's done it. Uh, it just makes total sense to me is that you don't have to sew if you do it. So the goal is is to get the, this particular spot or the base of this uh, darker uh, country red that you see here is it, to get it 1.25 inches in depth. So that's how much it will stick out from the bag when it's all put in. So you're coming all the way across right to the last one and get that last one and do exactly what I've already showed you before. Go into the next one that's available to you, pull through and through and that just secured it too. So then turn your work once again and just immediately just chain one and single crochet into the first one and all the way back across again. Seems like that's pretty easy, right? So in order to get the bulge happening at the base of it, you have to provide this extra at the base. Okay, so go to the last one and then again just extend over one more and just pull through and through. It's like a slip knot. Okay, so I'm looking over here. I'm looking at what she's done. So one, two, three, four, there you go. I think I just have one more to go so I'm gonna turn it. So if you decide to change anything on the pockets and making them deeper, all you just have to do is just very simply just you know alter and make sure that all the bases are the same. Okay, so regardless if you wanted to sew it at the end, you're almost gonna have the same result. So I would have done what, exactly what the crocheter did as well just by extending over one. Okay, and so when we're coming all the way back across, this is my last time, so it appears there's only four rows for what I want. And when I come back in just a moment, I'm gonna be showing you how to do the rest of these, but not showing you how to sew or do it again, but give you the tips on what you need to do to learn. So you're gonna come into the next one and then extend one more over as a slip stitch, pull through and then you're done. Okay, so now you've just created the base of a pocket and so you're just gonna grab your scissors and just being able to trim your yarn off and hide it at this point. So just kind of weave in your ends like so. And at the very end of this tutorial when we're putting everything together, uh, we want to uh, use, we're gonna be sewing along this edge anyway. So we're gonna sew along and capture that. So it goes to the outside of the bag, just like you see there. So that is the base of the pocket. So when you go to start your next pocket, all you just have to do is start exactly where you had left off the last one. Okay, so right where the very base one in here, don't go to the ones that we've extended across into, just to there. And it says that we have to miss 12. So we're gonna, we just count along 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and you know 11, 12. And so we're back to where she was right here as well. And then we restart and do another pocket again doing the same format back and forth. And then once you have that done again, again miss the next 12, come back in and do the same format just like you see here. So this is how you do the base of the pocket. So basically you end up with uh, the top of the pocket looking like so. The bases are all ready to go. What I'd also recommend at this point as well is that once you have this done, I would take um, another color of yarn and I would just weave it in and out. So just find the halfway point between the two pockets and it's easier to kind of look at it now 
than it is to sometimes sew it right directly on the project and just run some just extra kind of scrap yarn through it just to indicate the halfway point so that you know where to sew when uh, this onto the side of the bag when you're going to do it. So the pockets are in threes and so the pockets are the sewing is actually done right in between the pocket to create that bulge. And so I would just use your spare yarn and mark it like this. And so when I go to do the physical sewing I will follow the same line and I do this with all three of the pocket spaces that you need. It's actually it's only two. So you got one over here and just one right here. So let's review on how to join the panels. So we've already talked about that the sides and the fronts and the backs all are going to be the same. So it's a rectangular uh, basically same heights. We changed color in the exact same spot. You can see that this is the front panel or back panel. It doesn't matter. They should have the holes. There's two of them. One is for this. Now for tutorial reasons this is actually the original sample. I did cut it apart so that I could refilm. This is take number two. Uh, I already did this tutorial once before but the problem is I didn't really get into the finishing techniques and people demanded it. So I pulled this apart and we're redoing it back on camera on how to put it back together. So it's kind of looking a little rough on the edges but uh, you know that's it is what it is. We can't show you without doing so. So what we have today is that we want to be able to join the panels together. So we're gonna do before we put the base together we're gonna put the front and the back and the two sides together. Now do you notice here this is the same color that is in the top here and then it changes. So what we want to do is that this is just a single crochet join of putting the two panels together and right up here is the same color of yarn and then we change the color yarn then to do the remainder of here. You can use all one color if you wish uh, but it looks pretty sharp if you're maintaining. So what do you need to do to do that? So let's review that next. So how we put these together is that we just kind of sandwich them together okay and uh, basically make sure it is the front or back panel that's attaching to a side. If you put two sides together you'll be kicking yourself and we insert our hook into our actually we put our a slip knot onto our hook first. So I'm still using two strands for the durability uh, to keep it nice and strong because we've used two strands here and we want to insert and basically because it's single crochet we can kind of see exactly where we need to go when we're going to do this. Basically for single crochet every row equals one single crochet down a side. So it makes it very easy. So when I insert into the front panel I want to put the back panel on. Okay, so back and front meaning what you see on screen. So this is actually a side panel and uh, a front panel that you have. You're gonna take both of the strands and just pull it through. So the strands through. I include the straggler into that. It just makes it durable and then I just wrap it again and pull through the loops on the hook and therefore it's really easy to hide in those loose ends. So what I want to do is that I wanna work myself down an edge, insert in and single crochet into the side. So I'm just kinda eyeing it up and I'm making sure that I'm getting it to the other side as well into the same uh, kind of stitches. It's the exact same stitch work. So what's happening on the panel that I can see should be happening on the panel in the behind. And so I just single crocheting along. And I come to the point where this color is stopping. So here's my last time I'm, I'm seeing it. Okay and I'm inserting it to the back same spot. Okay and I'm done here. So what I wanna do is trim my yarn and I'm gonna use a darning needle at the end and just to kind of hide in that loose end and I just wanna pull it through and through just to lock it like so. And so now what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna grab the other color that I see. Okay and that's blue. So now I'm gonna pick up this color and great again create a slip knot. And what you can do instead of using a darning needle just lay this down on top and just put it underneath the stitches. So I'm gonna start with the blue where right into the blue. I do the same concept just wrap both around like the straggler and the yarn leading to the ball and pull through. Like so. I'm gonna chain one and just like I did before I want to just work myself down the side and I'm just putting this, this straggler in behind and I'm gonna use a darning needle and afterward just to kind of hide that into position. So I'm just going to continue to single crochet myself down the side of the panel. And you wanna do this for all four of the corners. Okay. 
Now working with two strands at one time has a lot of tension to it. I've noticed that people are, were commenting that their hands were tired. It, it is what it is. Um, it's a very, very strong bag. You want a bag that's gonna last you. Um, I see this as a beautiful project bag more than anything. Some people have said diaper bags and other people have other picnic bags and etc. So all I'm just doing is working down the edge so I don't need to sew these together. This is providing a very durable join. And I guess the only complicated part is that color change right at the top just like so but you can see it was really no big deal and you work yourself down. So I'm gonna leave this the rest of this thing and I'll meet you back at the bottom of this in just a moment. So when you get to the very base you're just gonna stop at this point and you're seeing the pocket already attached here because this is a redo. I've already taken the bag apart so that is already done on the other side but uh, we're gonna be covering that in just a moment as well. So right when you get to the bottom just simply cut your yarn, do a nice fasten off, weave in your ends at this point. Now to weave in your ends I would recommend grabbing a darning needle and just it has to be a nice thick um, or a large opening for the cotton. Cotton's not very um, flexible. That's what makes it a great project bag. So we want to insert it in and we want just want to glide it in behind the stitches. Now you're gonna notice it's a little bit tough to do at first. You do get used to it. So you slide it in one way. You come back in and insert it into the same area but not exactly. You wanna just have some fibers that are separating so it doesn't pull exactly out again and go in the other direction and then finally glide the hook into the, in the other direction again going into somewhere different. The project can never uh, stretch three ways at one time so by going in and out three times you guarantee that this thing will never fall apart on you. Okay and so you just trim it. So now you want to do all of the four sides, uh, the three remaining sides. So off camera I'm going to put the other sides together. It looks a little bit rough here and that's because I've pulled this bag apart before and so I could just then clean it up and you have nice clean edges as you're going all the way across. So uh, get that done and I'll see you back in just a moment. We're gonna start something else. So the next part of this tutorial is that you want to make your rectangular base. So again it's just single crochet. Just follow the instructions on here. So you end up with this. So after you get this done you want to secure it to the base of the bag. So at this point my four corners are now all put together just like this. Now as I told you this tutorial has been, uh, the sample has been taken apart to show you how to put it back together. The pocket that you see here would not be attached at this time in your particular element of doing this um, at this time if you were following it in sequence. So what you want to do then is that you have a four corners just like so that's ready to go and so basically this panel is going to go into that spot and what we're going to do is that we're just going to start to single crochet it into position. Let me show you how to do that next. So let's begin and we're just going to start off with the slip knot to put it onto our hook first and we're going to attach the base to the sides and the front panel. So obviously you want to get it so that the si the short side here is matching the side here. And we're just going to start off by just inserting into the base panel just like this and going right into a corner of the bottom of the crochet there of one of the corners. Okay. So you just wanna wrap both through just to secure it in. Always getting started is the most difficult part because there's a lot of yarn on this hook. Okay and we wanna pull everything together. And I would just do a single crochet to, just to kind of relieve the tension a little bit and then just get that straggler out of the way. So you're going to, because the panel is exactly the same size in width as well as the, the, uh, the side panel here, everything is going to match. So you're just gonna insert into the next stitch available to you in the base and into the next stitch available to you on a front panel in this case and you just wanna match everything and just single crochet everything together. So it's just how we did the, the joining of doing the side panels together. We're just doing the same thing here. And I'm struggling a little bit with this one because I'm trying to rush for tutorial reasons. Pulling it through. Okay and pulling it through. So we once that single crochet it through. So we just join the next panel or sorry, join the next stitches together. Just again single crochet. I think once I get this started I think I'll be okay. Now it's a very durable bag so it's just one of those things where the it can be a little tense to start. 
And that's my reasoning and I'm sticking to it. So there you go. So that's how you do it. Let me um, show you how to turn the corner once you get to the, all the way to the other side and I'll do the, I'll continue to do this off camera <laughs> or fight with it, one of the two. <laughs> and it's not a big deal really. It's just, uh, it's just really tense stuff. So I'm working my way down and the panel should actually match the other panel if you've done it right. If you're off by one stitch, you know what, or a couple, make it or fake it, right? So fake it or make it. So just do what you can and I wouldn't like tear apart your entire project if you're off by a stitch. Just kind of flub it a bit if you have to. Um, I don't know if that's the best advice at all but uh, that's what I would do because right now you're so far into your project that if you're off by one stitch it's not worth frogging everything just because of that one stitch. You know and the reality is at the end of the day you'll probably forget about it anyway once you start using your project and everybody's giving you compliments. So we're just making our way to the first corner. So most of you will probably just guess I'm just gonna turn the corner without really thinking much about it. So I'm just coming into the last one. So at this point I'm on my last stitch here so I'm gonna come in through here and just start down the side panel right here. So just I'm gonna work down the side. So it's just really quite simple to just turn your corner and just work down the other side. Okay, so please go all the way around on your, on your base and when we come back I'm gonna cover the handles of securing those in and then we're gonna cover the pockets then just as the final. So I'm just finishing going around the base of the bag so the base is almost attached and at the very end just do the same technique. I just slip stitch to the, the beginning one that you did just like that and just trim your yarn, run it through your darning needle, hide in that loose end and then basically the base of your um, uh, bag is then attached. Okay, so basically this is what it looks like at this point. The base is all going. The pockets are going to be, I'm not gonna do the pockets yet. I'm gonna do the handles but you can see that all four sides are now attached and they look amazing. So this bag should be able to sit up by itself. So when I come back we're gonna um, just review on how to do these handles. Okay, and you can follow the instructions to make the handles. They're really quite simple and I'm gonna just show you the attaching method uh, in order to do that. So you're gonna end up with, uh, right at this point you're gonna end up with holes in your uh, front and back pay, uh, panels and basically one strap attaches into the same strap. Okay, so the same side just like this. So how do we do that? Let's review that next. When attaching your straps to your bag, the strap is actually attached on the inside. So it actually is gonna go right through the piece of work. So basically it's coming through the front side. So what people can see, it goes through and then it comes up and stops exactly at the, at the top of here. So it's basically just sewn right through all of this. So you take your handle and you just simply just make sure it's not twisted or doing anything weird and you want to insert it on the front side so where people can see insert it through the hole and you're gonna do this for your two straps and you're gonna just fold it up towards you and then you're gonna stop at the top of the, the brim. And I wanna make sure that when I go to do this that it, the handle is not twisted in any kind of weird way. And what I like to do is that I grab my darning needle, use the same color and I put a slip knot right on the very end that's kind of open like that. So what I want to do then at this point is that I wanna insert in from the back side Okay, go right to the front side of the work, go right through and don't pull everything through yet. Just pull it close enough. So I'm gonna stop right there and I want to insert from the front side back and go to the back and I'm going right through the panel and both, both sides of the strap. So I'm gonna pull through and now what I want to do at this point, this is the, the slip knot. I'm going to insert the needle through the slip knot and then I'm gonna pull everything nice and tight that slip knot allows it to lock onto itself just like this. So you're gonna end up with a little bit of a straggler. So just kind of just manipulate it in a way that the straggler will get caught underneath and then go again so through the back side. Sometimes it can get kind of hard to push through which is good because that means it's strong and you're gonna come to the front side again and then just go to the back. So what I would do is recommend doing a square formation. So just now I'm gonna move down so just I've started at the top so go down and just go around the perimeter and that will make it a really nice strong bag. So I'm gonna work my way down making sure that it is actually getting the strap of both sides. 
coming to the front side. So you don't even see this yarn. That's the nice thing about it because it is the same color. So you can virtually go anywhere you want it to without it really being obvious that you've done so. But if you're looking for more fancier stitch work or you want to change your color just because you like to see stitches, you don't, you just be very careful about it. So I'm just going all the way around. You're gonna do this with all of the strap holes. There's only four of them in total. Two straps and then four holes basically. So now I've gone all the way around. I'm just gonna insert back in from the front and now I'm gonna lock this into position. So how I do that is just like I've done uh, showing you before. So I'm gonna glide into the stitch work three times. So I'm just gonna go one way. A friend showed me this. It was the best thing she ever did. So I'm gonna go one way. I'm gonna come back. I'm gonna go and insert, go in the other way but insert it somewhere else because the handle can never stitch in three directions at one time. So therefore this should never fall out on you. And I have yet to ever see one of these kind of finishes fall out anyway. So we're gonna do that. So now that I have it in three times I can cut it down right to the, the project itself. I can cut the straggler too. Okay and so therefore my handle is attached right where it should be and it looks amazing and you know you can see the difference between this test, the test crochet and myself. I went in a lot more. You can see it's a lot more flatter than hers are. So just be conscientious. Go for the look. Just be consistent if you're going to do so. So I think it's now time for doing pockets. Let's do that next. So it's now time to do the pockets and I would start off by sewing the pocket together with the project. So we have the base empty side now and we're ready now for the pocket. Um, basically what I did and we started off in this tutorial doing the pockets right on the very beginning is that I took a string and I marked it where I'm gonna do the sewing marks. Now this is just like doing the panel work when we did the sides. When we attached it we used a different color and then we did the same color so it looks like it matches. So when you're sewing with this, when you're using this color you need to sew with this color so it's hidden because it will show on this side and then once it changes to this color you'll use that color then to finish it off. But I'd recommend that we go around the perimeter of the of the edge first uh, with a sewing needle and we're going to sew everything into position. Now this is a lot wider than the actual bag itself. So what we have to do is that we have to be very conscientious of the pockets. So when we go to sew it we want to make sure that it's kind of buckling up into position like this. So you're gonna sew along this edge here and then here. Okay. So basically you wanna just kinda eye it out. I would almost recommend at this point get um, maybe um, some um, a pins and just kind of pin it in position where you want it to see it on this project because it'll be a lot easier to be able to just kind of go around it and sew it into position. So let me do that next. To pin it what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start off the very base where the pockets are and I'm just gonna line up where this orange should meet the base of here and this will be kind of my starting point. So I'm just gonna insert a pin in and this is cotton so it's a little bit tough to do it. So just make sure you got nice long pins and don't stab yourself by any means. And I'm just going to come along and I'm just gonna pin it in random spots so that it's in position for me. It's gonna be a lot easier to sew this together than it would be to uh, not do it at all. If you don't have any pins you can just use these uh, clip clamps and the clamps will just do it as well. So just kind of going around and just kind of clamp it into position. You wanna be a little bit gentle because those things can be quite rough. And so I'm gonna come to the other side now and I'm gonna pin this one. So I'm just gonna line it up to the, the base on this side. Just grab my clamps. These have been on my desk, my filming desk for like months. Never really had a purpose for them until now. So I'm just kind of following it up. So I guess the key that I want to, to explain to you in just a second, once I get this one done, is that I wanna make sure that when I've done that is that this line at the top, okay, just kind of follow it up on the project. Let me just move up the camera. You're gonna hear a squeak, or maybe not. So I just kinda wanna line it up so that it, I can see that it matches along the same kind of line along there. So now let's turn it to the base. And I wanna make sure the pockets are kind of folding up and it'll naturally happen on its own because of the way that you've done the pockets. Okay, 
because you want the pockets to buckle out. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna clamp what I think is in the right position at this time just right where the sewing line is and I'm gonna clamp the other side as well. And again I wanna be kind of conscientious of where everything is going because if I'm wrong it's gonna be obvious. So now I'm gonna pick it up and I'm gonna see okay is the clamps in the right is the pockets gonna be in the right section and basically what I'm trying to do at this point is that when I go to sew the base of the pockets are going to align perfectly when I go to sew it together. So let's grab our sewing needle and what I'd recommend is see how we got a color of red here and an orange. I wouldn't, I don't care too much about that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna choose red because it's the majority here and I'm gonna go along red through the whole bottom as I sew it together even in this orange section right here. It's gonna be hard to tell and then when I switch to the upper side here is that I wanna change it back to orange and then back to red up here so that it keeps it consistent because that's more visible than the base. So let's begin to do that next. Okay, to do the base you just gotta cut enough string. I'm using two strands. Again, I want the durability and people tend to put a lot of crap in, or I mean stuff in pockets. Sorry about that. <laughs> I think I'm gonna leave that in. Okay, so cause it's true. I think people put a lot of stuff in pockets. You're gonna wanna make sure that you, um, you uh, have it nice and secured. Okay, and I want to put that slip knot on the base of the of the string as well. And so I just wanna start off on an edge and I'm going to start off. Now I gotta carry orange around here anyway. So I'm just gonna start and just kinda fold it down and I'm gonna start right where it's red because the orange has to come down anyway. So let's just insert into the material. Pull through. And what I want you to do is insert your needle into the slip knot and pull it shut. And it will lock it onto itself and all this extra string can hide somewhere else. So we wanna put it onto the inside of the pocket area and we just want to follow the stitch work across and matching it to the pocket. And go along the entire base using this. This is called a whip stitch. For those, I always refer to whip stitches and people email me what's, what's a whip stitch. This is what a whip stitch is. So I'm just going around like so. So I wanna be conscientious that sometimes you need to kind of flub it a little bit and so if you're running out of stitches or whatever you just gotta just be kind of mindful. You can, it's the base of the bag so it's, um, you can really play around with that idea just like so. So just go along your entire base like so and I'll see you back in just a moment. So I'm coming up to the end. I've just whip stitched myself across. Sometimes you have to ad lib a little bit which I kinda did here but you really can't notice. You know you gotta be a little bit creative. So what we have to do then is just uh, finish off this needle. Okay so you do the same technique as I've already shown you twice before. Just go in and out three times. So and just choose different areas. So never go in the same path exactly. So you'd always have to go in somewhere else to get it in. And I stopped at the red section here and I'm gonna pick it back up at the orange and I'm gonna whip stitch myself up the sides. So basically I have a good uh, base here at this time and I can see it's still out. So the pocket is now secure to the base but it's now still uh, not sewn up here and I'm gonna do that as my last step. So I'm gonna continue along off camera, do the same concept with this orange attaching it and then I change the color to red as I go here just to make it look good as I go up. I want to here I did the stitch stitch work that wraps around the base just like so because it's on the bottom. I wasn't too worried about that too much but here I wanna be a little more conscientious that I don't wrap around this uh, visible edge just like you see because then that really will be noticeable. So I wanna go in and out but keep it to the point where it's not really visible at all as far as stitch work. Okay, so now I'm back. I have attached it here. You don't see any sewing marks because it's the same color and I've attached it with the orange. Attached along the bottom and onto the other side. So you wanna do two pockets the same way. The other one was already been done the same way. So we have to then attach on this side as well. So what we want to do then once you have that done is that it's now time to sew in these strips here. Now it's easier if you start your sewing at the base here so you can reach inside your project with the, with the darning needle. 
okay so you can reach in and being able to operate. So all you're just going to do is just lay again lay it flat and just kind of eye it up that you want to and then just start with your orange or whatever color you're using and just start from the base and, and sew up and then change your color when you get to the top here. So I've already shown you how to sew. So basically it's gonna be up to you now to figure that out in order to do it. Um, I think uh, everything's pretty self-explanatory. Um, I've shown you how to join. I've showed you how to do the handles and everything is all pretty good. So. so that's it for today. Show us a photo on Facebook. We'd love to see what your bags look like. Absolutely a brilliant idea. And until next time, I'm Mikey on behalf of Yarnspirations as well as the Crochet Crowd.com. We'll see ya.